All right, welcome to X Garage, where we dive into worldviews using the Christian worldview. Today we got Nate Anderson on here. Do you go by Nate or Nathan? Oh, either way. Either way, Always okay. <laughs> cool, and he's been working on a docu-series about post-millennialism. Uh, but first, uh, Nate, could you introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Yeah, uh, my name is Nathan Anderson. I am from the um, uh, small town of Pichilemu, Chile, a town on the on the coast here in, in South America. I think the big question um, is, married, can you say that? Have have two kids, and um, yeah, but I, I, I made a documentary um, in 2019, uh, launched it in February of, of 2020 called On Earth As It Is In Heaven, and I'm working up on a, um, a follow-up um, docu-series called Teach All Nations right now. Awesome. What got you into film then? Um, good question. I, I actually uh, was never that involved growing up with, with film or photography. My wife is, you know, a photographer and she, she's into photography, but uh, I actually just picked up a camera about uh, five years ago, maybe something like that. And, um, and yeah, started, you know, learning how to, you know, just, just following tutorials, figuring it out. And uh, yeah, decided to, to make a film uh, in, in 2019 you know, first more, uh, you know, feature length project. And, um, yeah, I've kind of just been, been going from there basically. Wonderful. Cool. Um, so what is, what's the big deal with post mill? <laughs> well, uh, let's see, there's, there's a lot to talk about. Well, that, I mean, for me, um, you know, growing up, um, having a, a, you know, not, not a expert, understanding of, of eschatology, but just kind of a general understanding of what most Christians believed in terms of the rapture, in terms of we're living in the end of days, and um, the world is winding down, and, and Christ is about to return at any moment. That was uh, just kind of the assumptions of most of the people I knew and interacted with as as a Christian, as an evangelical. And um yeah, as as time went on, when I was, I think probably about nineteen or or twenty, I um, yeah, I wanted to dig deeper on 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 theological issues in general, but specifically on the the issue of eschatology as well. And so that's when I started, um, yeah, was introduced um, to the issue of uh, uh, of, of preterism, to the issue of um, uh, amillennialism. And then a few years later, um, to uh, postmillennialism ultimately, and um, and yeah, it, 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 it especially the shift I would say from from all millennialism to postmillennialism for me was more than just kind of rearranging the the pieces on you know because <clears throat> in some ways uh, when we're talking about eschatology. Um, it, it, it's kind of like one group thinks it's going to happen this way. Another group thinks it's going to happen the other way, <clears throat> but on a, but, but basically there's not a huge difference. I mean, it, 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 in the end, what, what most Christians believe about eschatology is that, you know, uh, some, you know, the world's a, a, a bad place. Some really bad stuff is going to happen. And then Christ is going to come back basically. I mean, and you know, it, what, whether you're a pre-mill or a-mill, that, that's the, the basic outlook. And so even that change from, you know, kind of a, a basic understanding of premillennialism to amillennialism wasn't a huge, in my opinion, worldview change. I even remember discussing this one time with a pastor friend of mine who was a dispensationalist, and we were talking about, you know, Daniel or something. And at one point I said, well, you know, in the when I was an amillennialist, I said, you know, well, in the end, we're both saying that, you know, there's going to be, you know, bad bad things are going to happen, you know, right before Christ returns. So we're not, it's not that big of a difference what we're ultimately saying, at least in terms of, of the the present age. And so, um, but when I I started to understand the issues regarding postmillennialism, that for me was a 
a big worldview change because it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, um, this is something that um, uh, Pastor Doug Wilson brought up in my movie. He said, um, basically, well, what if we are living in the early church, you know, and um, uh, what if, you know, we're, we think, you know, we're at, at the end of days, but what if this is just the beginning? And and that's a, a big that's a big change, you know, from what I grew up assuming and being taught. And um, and that's why I think the issues regarding postmillennialism is more than just simply, oh, well, here's another theory that kind of rearranges the, the pieces on the time scale a little bit. It actually provides a substantially different um, understanding of the future, understanding of, of of how our faith passes from generation to generation, and 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 how we we are called to think about the future and and and, and build and do what we're doing for future generations. Cool, but didn't twenty twenty prove you wrong? <laughs> no. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little under the weather today, but you're good. Um, but actually, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because I it, I finished my movie. I, I I uploaded it to to YouTube on February fifteenth, twenty twenty. My my <laughs> first movie on, on post millennialism. Little did I know <laughs> what was going to happen over the next month. And I mean, you would think on one level, okay, a movie about post millennialism released in twenty twenty, no one's going to want to watch that. You know, uh, yeah. that's not the most optimistic year but it's actually been kind of the opposite because uh, i think because of what's been happening in the world people have a lot of questions and people want to discuss and want to uh, think about a lot of these issues on a on a bit of a deeper level and so actually i i i am you know in the providence of god i think 2020 has been a great year for post-millennialism <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, in, in your mind, what, what do you think are, are uh, good resources to go and, and learn about it? Beyond, of course, your uh, amazing docuseries coming up. Well, the the movie I, I released is good in the sense that you know it's it's a it's a it, it, it's a pretty low level commitment in terms of it's it's just a movie. You can sit down, you can watch it all at once or watch it, you know, over, over the span of a few days or something like that. So uh, that's a good introduction to some of those issues. Um, there's another, or a, another book that's really good is uh, by Pastor Doug Wilson um, called Heaven Misplaced, which is also a, a, a short book um, that just doesn't deal with all the details about anthropology, but it deals with some of the main um, and I think most important issues uh, with regards to the um, eschatology and postmillennialism. And so, Heaven Misplaced is a, a, a great book. There's there's another book by um, Keith Matheson called uh, Postmillennialism: An Eschatology of Hope, um, which is also pretty pretty short, pretty brief. It it, it, it that book covers many more um, subjects related to the issue. And, and, you know, there, there's a lot of books, really. But th then finally, I would say a, a third book. Um, well, actually, maybe two more. <laughs> Sounds good. There's Bring them on. Of, there's a lot of good books. Um, the, the, oh, what's this book called? The Puritan Hope by Ian Murray. It's kind of just a historical. It, it, it's more of a historical book. Um, and in fact, even John Piper, who's definitely not a post-millennialist, said that that book was one of his, he recommended that book highly, you know, Puritan Hope by Ian Murray. Talks about how post-millennialism was a big part of the a number of the revivals and the birth of modern missions and, and issues um, in that regard. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, um, Kenneth Gentry has a, a, a book called He Shall Have Dominion which is also a great um, introduction to, to the topic. That's awesome. Cool. I got those written down. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so what, obviously all this stuff is, is very, it sounds very important and, it, and it, um, it's close to you. 
Why, why do you think doing a docu-series on it would be good or effective? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I, 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 I did my first movie. With, I didn't really think a lot of people were going to see it, to be honest. It was my first movie. I'd never really done a movie. I kind of just, just didn't have a lot of, you know, didn't do a lot of publicity for it or anything. I just kind of released it on my on, on my um, uh, YouTube channel, which, by the way, my YouTube channel is all in Spanish anyway. So it's kind of weird that I have my movie on that YouTube channel, which is a movie that's in English. But so, yeah, I didn't have huge expectations for the movie, but um, but thankfully, um, yeah, a lot of people have seen it and a lot of people have been encouraged by it or at least challenged by it to, to think about these issues. And so, yeah, that's why I'm I'm releasing basically a follow up uh, to my to that first movie is what I'm, I'm trying to do. And so I just went back and interviewed um, some of the same people, but also some uh, some other folks and um, just and this time, not so much looking at the um, at the issue of uh, the details of eschatology, really, it's th this this project is more about the practical implications of uh, this idea that we have a long way to go uh, of, of historical optimism and, you know, that the church is ultimately going to win in history. So that's that's more I'm um, looking at the issue of Christian worldview, the issue of, of the family, the church, uh, how we interact in terms of politics and economics. And so it's it's very practical, more than, you know, abstract eschatology, I guess. Cool. When when you um, release these, what do you hope is the the ripple effect of of people watching them? Well, um, I hope at the very least that people would would you know that that the question would 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 uh, come into their minds of well, maybe we are in the early church. Who knows? You know, uh, that's that's definitely a, a possibility. Maybe the rapture isn't coming in the next five years. Maybe I should, uh, you know, build and and work and and use my talents and abilities for the glory of God in a way that might actually transcend my generation. That, you know, maybe I should, you know, be concerned with investing into the lives of my kids and my grandkids and the future. And I'm not saying, and and this is important. I'm not saying that if people that aren't post millennial. Uh, don't do those things, you know, of course, of course they do those things. But what I'm saying is that there is, I, in my opinion, a, a pretty glaring inconsistency with the idea of we need to build for the future, but at the same time, the world's about to end, you know. And, um, and so I, I think that a lot of Christians live with that kind of tension of just kind of trying to put those two things together. And, and sometimes one or the other wins out in terms of their thinking and in terms of the decisions they make. But I, that's why, you know, my hope for this is that at least to get people um, thinking uh, about those issues and in that direction. Cool. Awesome. I think, Ethan, did you have some questions written out? Yeah. So, uh, Nathan... Uh, Excellent film, by the way. I watched your your first film, and then I watched uh, that one that you sent over to Jacob, one that hasn't been posted yet. Um, mm -hmm. Great job! Like, I really enjoyed it. And um, I'm not particularly post mill, but um, it was really, really educational, and um, I actually learned a, a whole lot because I feel like um, post mill is just really under represented as as far as media. I'm mean, along with um, all mill as well, like. You can find a lot of stuff out there for for free pre mill for sure. Um, so going into going into the film, like how did you figure out like what questions were the were the best ones to to answer um, going going through it? Because obviously there's I'm sure there's there's thousands of questions that people would have um, concerning their their presupposition of of how to read scripture um, concerning eschatology. That's a really good question, and um, it, it, it's hard. It's not easy to, to you know, because, cause like, you can just kind of say, oh, I want to make a film about this subject, but then 
um, actually piecing the, you know, figuring out what questions to ask. And the other thing is in the context of an interview, you don't always know what the person is going, to, how the person is going to answer. And so mm -hmm. sometimes you might think you have a really good question and then the, they, someone answers and it's not exactly what you, what, what fit into to what you had in, in mind or were hoping for. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah um, on the first film, um, you know, I, I had a, a, a good amount of time to kind of think out the questions. I, um, you know, I scheduled the interview with Pastor Doug Wilson. I think that was one of the first ones I scheduled that like six months in advance or something like that. And so yeah. I had a lot of time to like think about that and, and, and figure out the questions. Um, and some of the other interviews were a bit more, you know, I just had about a week or so, but I was able to, you know, come in with a good amount of questions. Um, and, um, and part of that was also because I actually, you know, there's kind of a first draft of the movie that was never released because I actually did a bunch of interviews with, um, mo I was originally going to do the film in Spanish, actually. And, oh, wow. and I, 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 was, I interviewed you know, like three or four pastors here in Chile and, and people that I knew. And, but I just messed up so much on the technical aspect of things, you know, I, I messed up the audio and then, you know, there's a few oh, things easy. like that. And, yeah. and so I was going to have to go back and redo all those interviews. But yeah. then, um, you know, we had some political unrest here in Chile. And so it wasn't very um, easy to travel. Uh, around the country, um, and and right before that, I had I had actually gone to the state and done like the, these three three interviews over there. Um, I just ended up working with those interviews and and just making it all in English uh, in the end. So, um, but yeah, going back to your to your question, um, yeah, that first one, I you know I, I had a good amount of questions written out. On the second one. Um, yeah, the, a lot of the interviews that I did were very last minute. It wasn't very easy to get everything scheduled and figured out. And and uh, and so I kind of just, you know, most of those interviews I did just kind of walked in and, you know, made it up as I went along for the for the most part in terms of asking questions on the spot. Um, and um, uh, but actually, I, I think there's there's some some good good material that came out of those interviews for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, and um, looking at your 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 second film or the first episode of your second film, I don't know if you're episodically going to release it. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, like you really upped your game. Like I I feel like there's there's a lot of growth as far as like um, your the technical side of things and how you you spice things together. So. Um, Thanks. So for those who are waiting for that to come out, maybe watch your first film. Like, you guys are going to be in for a real treat. Like it's it's really well, well done. Um, Ethan's see, in film, well, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm into film. Like, I've been like trying to trying to make films since I was like like six years old. So, um, yeah. So really looking into maybe doing something um, like this for X Garage, uh, doing a doing a documentary or 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 making a um, I don't know a drama or something like that. So so for so for someone because I know like you're you're a post. Um, you're post millennial, so for other post millennials out there wanting to get into this um, uh, field of, of making film, I mean it's important to me as well. Um, even though I'm not particularly post millennial, to make films, I am. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is. He is. <laughs> um, what, what would you say is like a good good place to start um, uh, as far as like getting into that 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 field or or just making something? Well, I, I, you know, my experience as someone who, you know, never w was involved in any way, really with film or, or anything like that until very, you know, fairly recently, I think it, we live really in amazing times where, mm -hmm. you know, you can literally just pick up your phone and go out and, and make something, you know, and, uh, and, and it just everything is at your disposal right now. And so um in my experience it, you know it, it's it's been just go out and tr try to try to do it, make something you know and like like e even when we um, um we just started you know back in like 2016 
like just picked up a camera, just still had the camera just in automatic and just pushed record and, and all that. We, we made a little, you know, we made a little 15 minute kind of documentary, interviewed people and tried to put something together. And, you know, to me, that's just the way, the, the, the best way uh, to do things. I, well, I'll, I should also mention, I remember uh, one thing that was really influential. I, I, I um, listened to a talk uh, back in like 2016, I think it was, by uh, Darren Doan, who's a, a, a filmmaker, he's a music video director, um, and, and yeah, has made a number of documentaries and, and, and a number of really, really cool projects. Actually, and, just, I uh, actually just got just to meet him. Just the way him. that he laid it, oh, awesome. Yeah, we we yeah, live just a, right across the borderline uh, in, in Spokane, oh, wow, so okay. yeah. Oh, you guys are in Spokane? Yeah. Oh, awesome, yeah. Uh, Bruce Gore, who I also interviewed in my first movie, he lives out in Spokane, so I, I went by there to interview him. Oh, really? For my first film. Yeah. Um, Do you have his contact yeah. information? Maybe I'll steal that, steal that from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a really good guy. You guys should get in contact with him for sure. Um, but yeah, and so he, he gave a talk that you know seemed really interesting to me at the time, and it was just kind of like, yeah, you just need to go out and try to make stuff and people are going to probably say it's horrible and you know then go out and try again and so on and so forth so i just kind of took that advice i guess in, in some ways and uh, just started you know going out and trying to make make videos you know yeah um and and and, and um and to me i you know i that seems to me like the, the, the most reasonable way to, to go about things. And it obviously it depends on where you li live, on the opportunities you have. I mean, if you know a filmmaker in your area who, you, who you're friends with or something and, uh, you know, and who's willing to, to, to have you go and help him, you know, as his assistant or something, that's a great way to learn, you know. And, but I, I would say in general, it's something that, you know, just going out and actually getting stuff done, you know, and, and do and, and moving ahead with with projects and, and just go out and, and film something that, that would seem to me to be the especially today, because I mean, we're not dealing with like cassette tapes or film, you could literally just, you know, you just need to have enough storage on your phone or or whatever you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> to, to so, go out and, and, and do that. Basically, just go do it. <laughs> basically and yeah. if you don't and if you don't know how to do, do something you you know, get on google you go, go to youtube and type in what you don't know how to do and there very likely will be about 10 videos explaining exactly what you're doing wrong and um uh and that'll help you out <laughs> and so that that's you know to me it's amazing that, that we're able to to do that you know in this in this day and age i mean there's even like i i edit on a software uh by a company called black magic that's called davinci resolve and literally they have a free version of it that has like 90 percent of all the functions like you I, I edited my whole first movie on the free version of davinci resolve <laughs> and so so literally you just have to have a computer that you know can can kind of handle that i guess you know um, but you, it, you, it, it's the the barrier for getting in and just starting to to make things is is pretty low these days, you know. Yeah, no, it is awesome. Yeah, Jacob, do you have anything else you wanted to ask, Nathan? Uh, n nothing in particular, but I'm I'm excited to see uh, what you're coming out with, and we'll be following along with everything that you're making. Awesome, man. Thanks. Cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on, man, and talking to us for a little bit about your projects. And uh, yeah, hope to see you around some more. Sounds good. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what you guys do with the podcast as well. Absolutely. Cool. All right. We'll get this show on the road and see you guys later. <laughs>